it's very exciting, Ted, that we're here to announce uh, your Global Humanitarian Award. The Tech Museum is excited to be giving this award to you. We're here to announce it. And, um, and I'm just happy to be sitting here with you and talking about what this means to you. Well, I'm happy to be here too. Well, you have um, established numerous foundations over the years and a lot of good things that you've done in your life. Anything that stands out? Any, anything that um, you're most proud of? Well, obviously, the largest thing that, that I did was uh, the, the billion dollars to the United Nations causes, I guess. And that was to help the poorest people in the world, all, all over the world. And it was enough money to make a little bit of a difference. I think we were part of, uh, of the UN's effort to, to cut poverty in half over the 20 years, and they, they've done it. Uh, for instance, in Russia and China, the per capita income today is double what it was 20 years ago. That's pretty strong, but right? that's everybody in the whole country. The Chinese have got twice as much income as they used to have. I, I, I think that's great. What are a couple things that stand out to you um, that you didn't expect? I can't think of anything. I'm sure there were some. I, I, I'd say how, how easy it was to do, how, to, to work with the UN on this billion dollar, billion dollar gift. We collaborated with, uh, with them and uh, it went very smoothly. And for 10 years, 15 years. Were they, uh, they were obviously very uh, uh, accepting of this gift and excited oh, yeah. to receive it. Um, what was, uh, what were a couple things that afterwards that really came together? What are some positives that you've now seen out of it besides the poverty and things out of uh, the well, gift that you've given? The UN works in so many different areas, uh, but uh, Disease, the diseases, we made uh, a lot of progress uh, there, being part of the inoculation program all over the world for polio and, and measles and other, uh, other diseases, and the role of uh, women. Women in most of the world don't have equal rights with men, or at least half. And uh, we, we, we work on trying to get equal rights for uh, women and uh, better education for children. I'm also a Rotarian, and oh, one good. of the things that I am excited about is the eradication of polio. Yeah, we're, 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 we lost ground in the last year. Yes. And um, I just hope we've got the ability to finish the job. We're so close, it's just mm -hmm. that's gonna, and what a disaster it'll be to go back with where Polio is endemic all over the world. It just would be awful. But uh, we have to face that possibility that that might, that might happen. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's stay with it. R-O-T-A-R-Y. <laughs> That's, and I'll tell you, I was Rotarian too, oh, okay. years ago in Macon, Georgia. And uh, when, when, uh, when Rotary announced that they were going to take on polio as their key uh, philanthropic project, I was so proud of them, mm -hmm. and I still am. And I'm proud to be a alumni of Rotary. Mm -hmm. I've I've been in many walks for uh, ending polio, and it's uh, quite something when you feel like you're so close mm -hmm. to to ending and eradicating something. That's right. Something so large that has wiped out uh, oh, so many millions. Millions. Yeah. In looking back at your life, um, what was it that really invigorated you to get into philanthropy? You had a successful career. Um, what What was that bridge into giving back so much? Well, my father was a man of modest means. He had a little uh, billboard company, and but he, he did make some money and. Uh, he, he gave some scholarships to uh, disadvantaged youths, even though he didn't have a whole lot of money, and he said it made him feel good. And I thought, I, I, I uh, did, did a lot of the things that my father did, and uh, I, I got the idea to get involved in it from him. Mm -hmm. I saw um, pictures of you painting, I believe, the billboards or setting the poles into the, yeah, I did into that. the ground. 
That's that's pretty cool. So um, what what was it that um, then later on in life that just clicked in order to give back on such magnitude? Well, the more I gave, uh, the better I felt, and uh, I think that's basically it. Mm -hmm. I like that. What would you say to people that look at that young entrepreneurs? You started on Entrepreneur Global Entrepreneur Council. Um, or I believe you were involved in that on some level. What, um, what was it that, uh, as you were looking at that council and looking at, at uh, young people, what would you say to them when they look at all these daunting um, challenges uh, around the globe and they're trying to take on such big challenges? What would you say to them? Work hard, good luck. <laughs> it's uh, not easy to be a big success because there's a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the struggle is worth it because what else are you going to do with your life? Mm -hmm. You might as well aim for the top and if you don't get there. That was another thing my father taught me. He, he said, set your goals in your life higher than you can ever achieve uh, so that you won't run out of things to do like I did. He, 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 when he started out, um, he couldn't afford to finish college. And he, he had the hard time when he, when he got started. But uh, philanthropy was part of, part of his life just as soon as he got in a position where he could, uh, had the ability to, to, to do some giving back. What in your legacy are you looking to leave behind? What is it that you want uh, people to remember you by? Whatever they want to, because I've been involved in a lot of things from baseball and yacht racing to mm -hmm. TV, movies, the news business, restaurant business. You know, I've done a lot of different things and I'm proud of all of them. It's fantastic. Why did you choose to spend so much time in the last several, several years or, or even more in uh, philanthropy? What was... Uh, well, I had the, the ability. I, when uh, CNN turned the corner and, and basically the, the whole cable networking business, which had been a, uh, a drain, when it turned the corner, which it did, um, I had a lot of money for the first time and I wanted to figure out what to, what to do with it and I decided it invested in the future of humanity. Mm -hmm. How do you pick and choose what to invest in? Basically, I have uh, a staff in the foundations that does that. Because uh -huh. it is, it's a full-time job. Yes. Giving money away is almost as hard as making it. Wow. But not quite. <laughs> I read uh, that you, um, in your foreword of your, of your book, um, uh, that you, would you lead with your heart. You had written that you lead with your heart. I don't remember that. But maybe I did. It, it grabbed on to me. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things that I... That's nice. If I didn't think of it, I wish I had. <laughs> um, and so I'm curious, what, what things in your life do you feel like you really led with your heart on? What, was, what were a couple of things? Well, the thing I'm really proudest of is not my business achievements, but that uh, my family's done so much good and uh, they've made me proud of them. How do you see global innovation proceeding in the next five to ten years? So far, it's just been increasing. There's more people and more people going to uh, the scientific uh, universities and uh, more people doing innovative work. So I would be optimistic and say that innovation, if anything, should uh, should increase with all the uh, attention that it's getting. Mm -hmm. You uh, have built a very disruptive business model, and then again in your philanthropy, in helping to change things in the course of their destiny. Uh, things like, you know, helping to contribute to polio. Where is disruption going? How can we how can we disrupt now? We just keep doing what we're doing. There's still plenty of problems that we haven't, uh, haven't solved. With all our medical uh, improvements, we still don't have a cure for cancer. Mm 
Is there anything you can tell me about advice that you have given to your five children or grandchildren oh, that you over advice the years? One line that, uh, well, I'd, I'd, I'd say uh, early to bed, early to rise, work like hell, and advertise. Being a marketer, that touches my heart. <laughs> touches your heart. <laughs>